Welcome to Drift Guitars. My name is Chris. Behind the camera is Matt. As always, it is another episode of the 3,000-year-old guitar. Uh, as many people have commented, we are up to 3,001-year-old now at this point. But that's all right. It's fine. It's fine. Guitars take time. And uh, this one's for my buddy Will, and he doesn't deserve to have it anyway. So we're just going to do it even slower. <laughs> but anyway, in the last episode, we finally got this arm bevel all finished. It's looking good like it should. Um, so it's completely finished at this point, other than the all-important end graft that we need to stick on here. And for those of you playing at home and don't know what an end graft is, it is this piece that's going to go right here and cover up the seam of these two side pieces, and it's actually going to wrap around the back, which is kind of the driftwood touch. That's how I do it. Um, before we make the end graft, which is, like I said, the last step before this body is fully complete, all we need to do is a final level on this guitar and get all this binding kind of all cleaned up so that it's super smooth. Uh, and then it'll be ready for that because as you can see um, if, I, if I rub my fingers across here or even like there Matt show them that uh, we got all this glue squeeze out so we need to get all that nice and even um, and uh, then we'll do the end graph so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna move over to the vacuum clamp get it in there uh, show you guys some pretty b-roll of me doing that you don't need much explanation we are gonna just use my pinwheel sander and get it all smoothed out and then we'll show you how we're gonna turn this into something that actually is pretty because right now it's just a chunk of maple so we're going to move over there. All right, like I said, we just need to get this level. I've got the old trusty uh, rolling pin sander out, and we're just going to get these knocked down. I don't want to take off pretty much any material off of the actual ebony that's on here because it's already super good. Just getting these guys smoothed down. Uh, we're going to hook it up to the old drill. And um, I guess the main thing I would just caution against uh, like we did when we talked about the original leveling of this guitar is as we come around to this area up here where the neck is going to go really I usually will stop with my pinwheel sander for about here and not touch this and I'm gonna do this part by hand because this part right here this angle right here is super important to the neck angle of the finished instrument we want to keep it at about a 91 and a half 91 degree angle maybe up to 92 no more than that um, and not mess that up so I'm always really making sure that you're cautious in this general area uh, because the next episode of this guitar after we finish this one is actually going to be cutting in our mortise and tenon joint on the guitar so that's really the only thing I can think of before we kind of get cranking um, that I would say just be really careful of your mileage is going to vary if you're using plastic binding uh, this is going to go super fast. Um, if you're using wood binding like I am, it's going to go slower. If you're using like an ebony binding or a really hard wood like that, that's going to vary as well. Um, the only other thing that I want to mention before I get into it is that if you're doing a light colored wood um, back and sides and you're using dark wood binding, you can sometimes have issues with some of that dark dust from the binding getting inside the light wood and making it look really ugly. So you might have to get creative on ways to figure that out um, to prevent any sort of color um, pollution on there. But with that, I'm going to put my mask on and let this tater chip rip. Okay, we have that sanded, it looks really good. Um, and while I was doing this, I was thinking to myself, I was watching another YouTube channel the other day, somebody I've been watching for years, and it occurred to me, I'm not subscribed to them, and I was blown away, how am I not subscribed to them? It also occurs to me that 60% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so right here, like in this spot, like right there if you look, there's this giant red button that says subscribe. If you watch this channel and feel like you get a value out of it, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us in so many ways, whether it's us to be able to make a living doing this or to help us get people who sponsor these videos and get to go on cool trips and give you guys more information. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. It means the world to us. So now that we got that out of the way, we can actually show you how to finish off this level job. Um, so much of what we did up to this point has led us to the point we're at now where we're able to just quickly level this guitar and be done with it. If this is your first guitar, you probably aren't going to have as easy of a job doing what I just did um, because a lot of times your binding channels aren't perfectly smooth, they might be a little lumpy, um, you might end up having thick spots or thin spots on your binding. Don't worry about that too much if it's your first guitar because that just comes with patience and time. Um, but I do want to show you a little bit of what I'm looking for. When you're doing that level sand on your guitar, whether you're using the pinwheel sander or you're doing it by hand, what you really want to be paying attention to, and I've mentioned it in previous videos, is this the uniformity of the thickness of the binding. 
you want to try to keep it as good as possible. A lot of times whenever I, somebody hands me a new guitar, I know that we made a joke about this uh, ep episodes ago, but the first thing I always do is look at the binding because it's a tell. Uh, usually beginners will end up with like spots, especially around the upper um, upper bow to lower bow where the binding gets super, super thin. That's usually um, a tell of not cutting your binding channels super accurately. Um, so just pay attention to that. It's really easy if you're just hogging away material to end up going really thin on your binding in one spot or another and you'll really see it uh, when the guitar is completely finished. So the last thing I need to do is just do a quick level sand on the back here because it's a little bit proud and then we're gonna get into the end graph. I'll show you how to do that, but uh, yeah. That's this, this is pretty easy stuff at this point. <laughs> Okay, so I got the back sanded down. Before um, we move on to the um, the end graph, I do want to mention, because I'm always trying to help you guys out at home, I don't need it on this guitar because it's already super smooth, but just like when we originally leveled the sides, get yourself a piece of spring steel. Um, I'm, I think I got this at LMI years ago. It's a piece that is meant for um, bending sides as, as, a, as a support. Um, get some double-sided, uh, or put some adhesive-backed um, sandpaper on here and you can use it to effectively level your sides. Uh, I'll put some 180 on here. Uh, and then you can take this and really get a nice even sides level without any lumps in it, which is super important. You wanna make sure you get all the lumps gone on here. You wanna make sure you get this super level because we're going to obviously be applying a gloss clear coat to this guitar at some point towards the end. And any sort of lumps that you have inside of it, once you get a light source on them and finish on it, you're really gonna see them. So just take your time. Uh, I am kind of glazing over that step on this video because we've already covered it in a previous episode, but I just want to take a moment to mention it. Um, you can also get yourself some nice scrapers uh, and, and get those level. Um, like I have a spot right here that's not quite all the way down to level yet, so I'll just hit it with a scraper and get it nice and good. So, you know, figure out what works well for what you're doing. If, if you don't have a pinwheel sander like I do, use a scraper. If you don't want to use a scraper, you can do it with sandpaper. Um, you can take sandpaper and put it onto a wooden block and do it that way if you want. There's, there's just so many different ways you can do this. They all have their pros and cons uh, and, and do that. So, I think we are good to go and we are going to do our end graph now. Let me grab one of these guitars real quick. This one is another ancient Sika guitar. We've shown many times in this video, but what we're trying to do is this end graph that I have down here. It's decorative, 100% decorative, but it also covers up, like I said, this joint that's down here. There's really no way around it unless you were to bend your sides out of like a one giant single piece, which I've never seen done before. You're gonna need some sort of end graft. You know, Martin, uh, I think it's a more traditional way of do doing it. They do like a V down here. Um, and then they do all these miter joints with their binding to get it all locked in and looking really good. I kind of stumbled into this method, God, probably seven or eight years ago. Um, I, A, I like the way it looks, it's really cool. And it's cool because it wraps around down here and it looks really nice. But it's so much easier than the Martin way too. So it's kind of like a twofer. So you'll notice because of the wraparound thing, I've done something with this guitar that you may not have noticed before, but on the top of the guitar, I've actually got these butted up against each other. It's all gross looking now because there's black dust inside of it. Um, so you're gonna visually be able to see that joint, but down here, it doesn't line up. That's because I'm gonna be covering up with this end graft. Um, and it also makes building the guitar easier because I'm not spending a bunch of wasted time trying to get this butt joint perfect on the binding because it's gonna get covered up anyway. So um, I think the reason I did it in the first place was some sort of issue like that where the, the joint wasn't super good. Everything that's ever been invented on an acoustic guitar is because somebody messed up and tried to cover it up, I promise you. So what we're gonna do is I found myself a piece of maple. There we go. I found myself a piece of maple that's actually very close match to the existing binding that's on here. It's got some good flame inside of it. Um, so we're gonna cut it and we're gonna make the end graph and I'll show you how I do that. It is probably two millimeters thick. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna go from there. So what I'm gonna do is just take my 180 grit here and I'm just gonna give myself a nice clean edge, something nice and flat. I just need it. Cool, looks good, feels good, smells good. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna just grab my calipers and I'm gonna come up with a distance that I feel like looks good. Uh, let's call it points, yeah, seven tenths of an inch. For those of you in metric land, 17 and a half millimeters. And I'm gonna slap this bad boy on here and I'm just gonna mark a line. That's all we're gonna do, we're marking a line. 
and I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and I'm going to carefully cut that out just proud of that line and then I'm going to take my sandpaper and I'm going to get it perfectly smooth so the seven tenths of an inch strip the whole way so that'll be what the next strip is come up with a design that you like that you think is super cool if you want to follow my way do that as well I don't have a freaking patent on it um, but yeah that's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and cut this um, because the next step after that I'm actually going to bind this whole piece of um of end end graft with some pearl because i think it looks nice just like the guitar that i showed you a few minutes ago once again you don't have to do that either on some of my uh, lower trimmed guitars i don't do that pearl trim on there but yeah so you can see i'm just going to cut along that line i'm going to cut just on the outside of it so i've got this down to like i said seven tenths three quarters of an inch just about got the width cut onto it so the next thing i need is i need to cut the length onto it so what i'm going to do is get matt a little closer here i want to my end grafts come up into the upper binding but they don't they're not flush it comes down just a little bit and then I'm just gonna arbitrarily come down here on this end and make a mark I'm gonna make this a little bit longer than it needs to be but you know I'm probably about three quarters of an inch uh, past this point here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off you know this side of it over here and then I need to make sure that that's perfectly square I've already squared off this end so we're gonna cut it make it square and then we'll be ready to do our pearl trim around the end of this We've got the end graph made. I've got it sanded down. It's looking good, feeling good, smelling good. Uh, it's the right size. So what I'm gonna do, at this point, you could just route out a pocket and put this thing in, but I like to make it look a little bit prettier uh, on my guitar. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna glue on some, uh, some abalone shell that I have here. Uh, honestly, I don't worry about trying to put miter joints on here. Um, I used to do like a 45 on the end of my pearl to get this thing nice and wrapped. But you don't see it. You, you can't with this. This um, this is the advanced shell technology, uh, the abalum shell that they make, and it's got such good coloring and everything inside of it. That you can't see the joint on it when it's all put together. So it kind of makes it a little bit quicker for me. So I can actually just do a butt joint on it like that if I want to, um, and you won't be able to tell that it's not uh, a perfect miter unless you're looking like ridiculously close. But who gives a crap? Um, so let's get this glued on here. It's not that hard. It's not rocket surgery. Uh, I'm using some Sumac number 20 super glue, some media viscosity. All right, so that looks good, feels good, smells good. Let me see, I'm trying to find a nice matching one here. You can get me a nice, look at that. You can't even see the joint really. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna glue it on. Stick. All right, so now I've got um, one piece of, of abalone on and another piece. The cool thing about this technique is you can actually hold it with your finger you can snap it, flip it around, and then boom, you've got your next butt joint ready to go on that end. So a little something I learned back in you know, the day. Yeah, so I'm gonna glue that piece on. What I like to do so that I know how far to put my glue is I'm actually going to just put a little pencil mark right there. And then I can take my, my super glue and just apply it here. Boom. Make sure you do color side up because there is a side that's not nearly as pretty. Bada bing. Oh, my fingers are so stuck to this one. There we go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> good God. Yeah. Uh, a good artist always leaves a little bit of himself in his Yeah, work. there's a whole bunch of my DNA on these guitars. There's a lot of finger skin. <laughs> Yeah, in the future, if they ever want to prove authenticity on my guitars, they'll just be like, well, check for check for his skin on the guitar. Uh, the other two side pieces are just going to, they're going to go proud as well. Let me get it on there. <laughs> so bad. Uh, and we're going to break this one a little bit proud. We're going to flip it and we're going to get this side glued on and then I'll show you how we'll prep it for the last little step here and we'll be done already. All right, it's only been eight hours and we're already done. <laughs> All right, obviously we've got our pieces that are sticking out a little too far so I'm going to cut them a little bit closer. Don't want to get right up against it. We're going to cut that piece off. We're going to cut this piece off. And then we're going to cut this piece off. So now I can take my sandpaper, nice and level, we'll get that sanded nice and level there, still not quite there yet. 
Yeah, looks good. Looks good. Being very careful on this side. You don't want to break the pearl. So we're just going to sand it nice and smooth to flush. So now I can just take a little piece of this and then glue it on right there. And we'll do that one more time with the clipping and the sanding and we will be good. It looks really sloppy right now. I know the, those of you playing at home, especially if those that don't build guitars will see this and be like, really? That looks a little sloppy. But much like the American Treasure Bob Ross, this happy tree is gonna look really good. <laughs> it's gonna look really good. <laughs> So that's our end graft in very rough form. I haven't sanded it down smooth to make it look really nice and uniform yet, but I think what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm gonna run it through my drum sander just to get it at a nice, even, uniform thickness. Once I run it through the sander and it pops out the other side, we'll show you guys how it actually looks really nice. And then all we're gonna need to do is actually inlay it into the guitar and we're gonna be on the home stretch. Um, before I get into that last little step, I do wanna mention to you guys, if you are following along with this or following along with this build has made you go, I want to build a guitar myself. Um, we've mentioned it in some past videos, but Matt and I have actually curated a collection of Tonewoods on the website at drewforguitars.com slash Tonewoods. And we have some really fantastic Tonewoods on there that are not super expensive. We obviously have some Brazilian Rosewood and Zircote and things like that, but what we have some highly figured cherry and some flame maple, and we have some Sitka spruce as well. Um, options for those of you at home who are looking to get in the building, um, looking for wood that's not gonna break the bank, but actually looks really nice as well. and will obviously most importantly sound really good so check out the um the website driftwoodguitars.com slash tonewood and buy some of the wood we'll mail it to you guys directly from our workshop here we cut it ourselves we dry it ourselves um i guarantee you that it's going to make a fantastic guitar and you're going to come in way under budget uh so yeah do that all right fresh off the drum sander what do you think what do you think it looking pretty good right yeah man. okay now here's what we got to do We've got to get this obviously inlaid. Have we done? We haven't done any actual videos, I don't think, on this channel of any inlay work. I don't believe, right? No, this is our first like inlay. It's not hard, it's just a rectangle, but it's still an inlay nonetheless. So it's you're gonna get the general idea of how to do those. What we need to do first is find the center point on this piece of end graph. So we're gonna do that here with our little calipers. I usually mark the underside of it, is the easier way to do this. Um, just mark, I'm not gonna do this on the guitar. So many people comment, L listen here, we need to talk about this for a sec. People are always commenting when I'm like leaning on a guitar. Well, if that was my guitar, I would never, I would never take it to that man again because he leans out. I'm not putting my whole weight on the guitar. I'm just putting a little, like I'm barely leaning on it right now. So relax, people, relax. <laughs> because we've marked the underside, um, on this end, I'm actually gonna bring that mark just around. So we're at a point where we can see it. And we're gonna line that up with the gap and then on this side, I'm actually gonna come underneath and I'm gonna line my mark up with the center seam of the wood, um, which is right there. Um, I'm not really worried about lining up with that because we're gonna cut that part off. So, once again, just get this up in here. Line this up with the center seam, which you're not gonna be able to see on camera. And then we're gonna begin to um, mark where we need to uh, do the inlay. What I like to do, is either use a scribe or a razor blade and very carefully um you can just lightly tack this on with some super glue if you'd like um, i'm not going to do that in this particular case but just being very careful not to make this thing move we're going to scribe a line here be very careful on this side that you don't fall off and, and tear anything up but we're just very carefully marking and this is african ebony so it is super super hard um, if you're doing this with uh, maple or anything soft like that, it's not going to take much pressure. Very lightly marking here. And then we're going to very carefully come around this side and mark right here. I like to use um, the razor blade over a scribe because it gets right up against the edge of this. And I know that my mark is going to be the true size of the piece. Um, but yeah, so there you go, boom. That's what we're gonna remove. So what we need to now do is, uh, I have done this a couple different ways. I've either done it by hand. I'm not gonna do it by hand on this guitar because it, once again, it's ebony and it's gonna be a pain in the butt. If you're using a softer wood, you could do this with just a chisel if you'd like. Um, nice sharp chisel um, and taking your time. But So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set up my, my Fordham tool. 
Um, and we're just gonna route out a pocket here very lightly, um, kind of the rough pocket, and then I'm gonna use a chisel and we're gonna get the edges of it nice and clean. But uh, yeah, let me do that real quick. I've got my Fordham tool here. We've got a um, eighth inch bit inside of it. I have set the depth to this. This is all using the, um, for those of you that are gonna ask, this is the LMI, I'm sorry, this is the Stumac um, Dremel tool router base, which gotta have it. It's amazing. We did a tool giveaway of one of these uh, probably like four months ago. It must have. This is the Fordham tool, which is this giant, it's basically a giant Dremel tool with a full size motor over here with a flex shaft over here. Um, but a Dremel tool will get you there. You set the depth to this to the exact same depth as our end graft, which is just basic. This is inlay work 101. No big deal here. But yeah, so we're just gonna start routing this out very carefully. I'm gonna put my optivizers on. I usually start in the middle. I'll route a channel up the middle and then slowly start working my way around and getting it wider and wider. But uh, once again, not rocket surgery stuff here. Take your time, do it right. Stumac has a nice video for inlays if you wanna. Stumac does have a nice video for inlays, so check that out. Yeah, yeah. We're not in it, but. Well, well shout out to our friends. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, shout out to Susan if she's watching this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's that's routed out. It's roughly routed out, should I say. Um, let's get in here and show them kind of where we got on this. Um, you can see I came up close to the line. We're probably about a millimeter away. Um, you know, 32nd of an inch-ish. And uh, so the reason I do that is because I'm not gonna rely on that little bitty Dremel tool, um, a round tool to give me a straight edge. It's almost impossible to get that dead perfect. So what we're gonna do now is use some chisels. Uh, and we've got that nice line on there. Uh, hammer time. All we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing lined up and you'll hear it as I, I'm gonna drag this chisel. Uh, maybe you're not gonna hear it, but it'll actually click as it lands inside that slot that I made with the um, razor blade. And then very carefully, I'm just gonna give it a pop. I'm not trying to get all the way through it at this point. We're just trying to score a line. Especially because this is ebony, it's super hard and dense and it's not gonna cut super easily. And we're gonna keep moving. I might switch to a sharper chisel. This one is, we still haven't done our chisel sharpening, Matt. Mm. Anybody uh, anybody at home watch Formula One? Uh, John and Matt came over yesterday for the race. This is for, to make it evergreen. This was, uh, where did we, oh, this was Miami. Miami yeah. The inaugural Miami race. So boring, God, it was so boring. So hopefully we'll have a good one soon. <laughs> but Okay, so what we've done is I've just created a, a score line and I'm not, I'm barely, into this. I'm not trying to remove a whole bunch. I'm trying to be very careful. Yeah, so we're just taking off a little bit of this. Oh, that done messed up almost. So I started to lift up some of the ebony right there. You can see it. No big deal, because we like to show our mistakes on this channel. But I haven't blown it all out yet. So what I'm gonna do is take my number 10 super glue here. Um, <laughs> and we're just gonna flood this spot real quick with some, some super glue just to get that back down. Um, no big deal. I'm gonna push down on it with my chisel. I'm gonna hit it with this. It'll buff out. It's fine. It's fine. It's nothing to see here, folks. We'll get that sanded down and looking really good here in a minute. But clearly, we're not ready for prime time quite yet. Oh, she's she's still a little still a little wet. All right, now we're ready to go. Bruh. I had to give her a little sharpen here because I was having some struggle buses. So we sharpened up our chisel. This ebony is formidable. Dude, this ebony's kicking my butt. We're having more struggles here than you'll probably have at home. I mean, ebony's kind of like, it's not really used for back and sides very often and I'm beginning to see why. It is a pain, it's like working with steel here. But yeah, we're just kind of working our way around, just taking our time, getting it right. You saw that we had a little bit of a blowout situation with some of that ebony and we've repaired it. Uh, I just need to do a little bit more sanding in that one spot, but uh, these things, any luthiers that are on YouTube acting like everything they do is absolutely perfect at all times. It's not telling you the, the truth. <laughs> oh, now we're getting it. Now we're getting it nice and sharp. I tend to uh, to put a slight angle kind of this way into it so that the, the cavity itself actually opens up in this direction. 
um, it's it's just to make it so that as we put the inlay in, it'll it'll fit in a little bit better. Um, just very slightly, maybe maybe five degrees. And then we should be now that I've kind of broken the seal, able to chisel it out really easily. So now I'll be able to hit it with my chisel, and it should come right out. Yeah, there it is. That's what we want. All right, so that side's good. Let me hit the other side here, and uh, we'll keep moving. So that's good. Ooh, I just spit all over it. I'm just going to chisel out the other side. I need to do one more pass with the hammer. So that is super good. So now what we need to do is I'm just going to, like I said, just chisel this part out, and then we're going to get up into the maple. So the thing about the maple, okay, so the thing about this maple is that there's not a lot of, of bridge of wood kind of holding it all together at this point because we've made it really thin. So just be very careful with your chisel. Don't push up into this direction because you're going to blow out that whole piece. But the maple is obviously a lot softer than the ebony. So what you can do is you can get in here without the hammer. If you want to use a hammer, you can, but with a sharp chisel, you can just give it a wiggle. Just a wiggle. Happy little wiggle. As Bob Ross would say. And then same thing here. I know my head and my body is probably all in the shot, but that's okay. And then the same thing here, just a little bit of a wiggle. That thing's always in the shot. <laughs> Very light hit with the hammer. Working our way around. I didn't think this was going to be this complicated, but this has turned into quite the... <laughs> okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is looking really nice. Let's get a good shot of what we've got so far. So, um, everything should be down to where it needs to be. I need to find the end that I marked over here. Look at that. That's exactly where my hammer go. Very lightly. Going. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, as a, it's a little bit actually low. The whole piece is down a little bit lower than I want, but I'll actually backfill that up with a little bit of um, some epoxy and we'll glue this thing in place. Um, you're gonna, you'll see this piece hanging off the, on the back here. Ain't no thing, ain't no thing. I'll explain to you why, we're, why that is uh, important to leave hanging off here using my technique um, in just a second. But what I'm actually gonna do is just tighten up these little corners here real quick and then we're gonna fill this with some glue and slap this bad boy in there. But yeah, it's actually probably for you at home if you're doing this my technique, it's gonna be a lot easier for you than it was for me uh, because this ebony is just, it's brutal to work with for doing things like that. But uh, yeah, we'll slap some glue in here uh, and, and move on. And, uh, turning the AC off to shoot these videos for you guys. I'm like dripping in sweat right now. It's not even hot out yet. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll show you guys a little bit of the gluing and then we'll finish up wrapping this thing around the side. Okay. Uh, we actually grabbed a little bit of lunch there, had to eat some food. Uh, but this is now ready to go. You can see our pocket. Uh, what I think I'm going to do, in, instead of using epoxy on this particular case, I'm actually just going to use some number 30 or some thick super glue for this joint. It's not a big deal. Everything is really nice and tight, so I'm not concerned about the structural integrity of it. So that's what we're going to do. We'll pull this out. We're going to hit this up with some number 30. Of course, it's about empty, so we'll see if there's actually any glue. Ah, there we go. Get some glue left in there. And in order to ensure that this actually is dry, I'm going to hit it up with some accelerant first, or hit the hit the end graph up with some accelerant. Ah, there we go. Good, 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 good. I'm going to get that nice and sprayed. Why am I hand shaking so much? There we go. I'm just trying to get it nice and level. Yes. And then I'm gonna switch over to my number 10 and we're just gonna get that to wick down inside there. All right, so that's, that's good to go. What we're gonna do now, here's the trick folks. We are gonna switch over to just a little flush cut saw here. I need to get a new saw. You saw what I did there? <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Nope. All right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is a super thin um, curved blade, Japanese pool saw. Uh, it's got a little bit of some shards on it. No big deal. No big deal. It's actually messed up from the friggin' Martin guitar um, breakdown that we did a while ago. It tore up the teeth on this bad boy, but I digress. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut this just proud of flush. I almost took off my finger just then. It, like, it cut some skin, to be honest. <laughs> Everybody's good, right? Following along at home. We've got this now, super important. Do not lose this. Do not lose that. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna actually sand this nice and flat, get this smooth. So that's actually really, really good. Super smooth. I can't feel any bumps with it whatsoever. It looks good, feels good, smells good. Obviously, I'm not making it absolutely dead perfect yet. We're going to get all that prepped up before we do our finish on the guitar. But now we need to do the part real quick where uh, it actually bends over the side. And that's where this part's going to be important. So what I need to do is flip, uh, flip this over so that we can actually see that side. So what we've got is this is a little bit proud from where I cut it. So what I need to do is I'm going to hit it with my sander real fast. I'm um, just to get it nice and flush. That's one. Now, this piece here, I get to decide, see how much it's sticking up? I think that's a little bit too much, just to my eye. I'd like it to actually be a little bit shorter. What do you think, Matt? What do you think? Is it ugly? Oh, uh -huh. <clears throat> Stick it up. It actually doesn't look that bad. It's nice and square, right? Yeah. It's a, this is a personal choice. You can decide here how much how much wraparound do you want. I'm just going to take it over to my sander real quick. I want to get a perfect 90 degree. I'm probably going to cut off that much right there. No big deal. Whatever, you know. Cut off whatever you want to make it look good. So I'm going to do that real fast and then I'm going to show you how we're actually going to we're actually going to put a miter on the the existing piece that's already been inlaid. Uh, and then we're going to cut out a pocket right there and then this thing's going to be done. Uh, it's it's not super hard. Um, but it looks good. Okay, so what we need to do is I'm gonna take some super glue and we are very carefully going to tack this thing on exactly where I want it. So what I'm looking for, and obviously this hasn't been mitered and everything yet. You can see all the end grain, but we're gonna line it up perfectly with the existing pearl on here. So I'm just gonna take some, it's number 20, stick it on it very lightly. And then we're gonna tack this guy in place real fast. Making sure that you get everything lined up correct right mm -hmm. looks good and then you're gonna check for just just for general square so she's nice and tacked on looks good um, visually you want to make sure that it's it's you know parallel with the the, um, the grain on the end of your guitar that's something that you just need to look at to just check you really don't measure it it's just something you look at now we've got a little bit because the bottom of this guitar is not perfectly flat i'm just going to take a little bit of sandpaper here we're just going to round it just to match the contour ain't no thing looks good so now i'm going to take another razor blade and we are going to trace the outline of this one really quick very carefully you don't want to make a giant scratch in your guitar jeez this thing needs to be tightened down huh? Did just go a little bit too far on my razor blade. It'll sand that out. Look good. So now I can take my, um, I usually take another razor blade very carefully. I don't want to break my pearl. Pop that back off. And we know now where we need to route. Um, the nice thing is we've already got our Stumac, um, uh, uh, what is this called again? Router base. Router base. <laughs> our yeah. Dremel router base already pretty much dialed in. I'm gonna make it a little bit shallower. We're gonna cut out that pocket just like we did on the other side. And uh, and it's gonna be pretty easy. Top divisors, ears. So we've done what we need to do on that but as far as the router is concerned, but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to edge up, we're going to line this thing up like a good haircut uh, along the edges here to get it right. Um, I need to get a smaller chisel. This thing looks like a beaver got a hold of it. Uh, this chisel's nuts, not doing its best. So I, I need to, to clean up the edge on it real fast. Let me do that. 
Looking good. I, I am not. Let's make this clear right now. I am not getting my chisel all the way down to the end here where the end graft is that I've already put in. That's going to be treated a little bit separately. So I am stopping just short of where that end graft is. Um, so that's super important to the next step. Um, I hate to see you guys make mistakes before we get to the important part. So we're going to do the same on this side. We're just knocking it down. still need to do is the miter joint to get the to get it wrapped around so that it actually looks like one solid piece so that it's kind of kind of melted is the look that we're going for right so that fits in there nicely but that's obviously not going to work right there so what I like to do is uh where's my sanding stick at Matthew there it is there it is in the drawer where it belongs yeah so we're going to put a 45 degree angle on this I'm just arbitrary here. It's just a, using the old eye, eye micrometer. All right, we're getting there. The eye-chrometer? The eye-chrometer, yeah. You don't want to call it that? Well, Apple would sue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we also need to do is put a 45 degree angle bevel on the inside of this end graph that we put in as well. So I'm gonna take a nice sharp chisel and we're very carefully here going to put a 45 degree angle on this, including into the pearl. This is why your chisel needs to be very, very sharp. Coming back this way, so I'm getting Matt's way. This chisel, chisel did sharpen up very nicely. Very nicely. Are you saying your tools work better when you take care of them? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Let's see, we're just checking for fit now. Um, we want to get that miter joint nice and tight. Uh, it's not quite, it's looking better, but this piece actually needs the miter cut into it a little bit more. It might or might not. It might or might not fit, we'll see. <laughs> it's a stupid joke. This is why we're looking for job openings. <laughs> What am I seeing? I'm seeing a little bit of a... You can't fire me. Your wife already fired me three times. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, I see it, I see it. You really want to take your time with this one, just like everything, obviously, but if you mess this up, you're gonna to have to make a new one and it won't match perfectly from the end graph. That's what's nice about making this out of one piece of wood. You really want it to look like it's melted uh, around the corner. It's so close. It's a little bit more. Yes, that's it. And I'm gonna push down on it nice and good with some glue, but yeah, we'll put some, some thick super glue. See, okay, there you go. All right, I'm gonna hit it with some super, or some sandpaper real fast, and you won't be, you're gonna be impressed. <laughs> Mineral spirits for you, just for funsies. You ready? Yeah. You good? Yeah. That's looking pretty good, right? Yeah. I'm gonna get my camera focused. Yeah, I'll pull it off of here real quick, actually. Show you what it looks like. There it is. Yeah, dude. Looks good, right? That's great. Obviously, we've still got our, um, you know, our final sanding before we do finish work and all of that stuff, but it's good for now. A little bit of that ebony dust is down inside the maple, but I'm super happy with it. So, uh, yeah, I, I am super stoked on how this looks. This guitar body is now actually structurally, other than cutting the mortise and tenon joint on the on the uh, upper area here, it's completely finished. It's good to go, and uh, I'm super excited to be moving on with my life. <laughs> and getting onto the neck of this guitar. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. For those of you that have been paying attention, you may have seen that I uh, have been looking over here a little bit. And we do have a new, a, a, a new team member. John and I have been buddies for years. John is now working. So show John. Let's get John on camera real quick. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> he's uh, he's new to the YouTubery. Uh, been a consumer for years. Yes. But uh, we'll get him on camera a little bit more. But we're excited to have John running the CNC machine and hopefully doing some guitar building as well. Um, yeah. What else, Matt? Anything? Anything? Mm -hmm. Check out the Tonewood stuff on the website. Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys do that. Please like and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Right there. There's the button. Hit it. 
And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode where we get this uh, move on to the neck, which I'm super excited about. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.